It's a good morning to you all. My name is Zenzel and David and this is The Breakfast Club. Welcome to Asake Online. Today in our program we'll be looking at one of the issues that we've always talked about, the issue of the 5th Brigade. There are so many stories that are told about the 5th Brigade, the methods that were used, the training, their brutality and all these kind of things. And we know up to now the government of Zimbabwe has not formally apologized uh, to the people of Materialand for the killings. The uh, former president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, said it was a moment of madness. And the new president of Zimbabwe has hardly said anything. Uh, at one point, he talked about bygones, be bygones, and people feel he was uh, referring to the issue of Gukraundi. But we know that he has talked about the National uh, Truth and uh, National Peace and Reconciliation Committee, which was set up. In our program today, we'll be talking to Mr. Ndlovu, who was actually part of the 5th Brigade. He will be sharing with us his experiences on what he went through while he was in the 5th Brigade, the training that they received, and many things that happened. I hope with this program, you are going to learn a lot, get new information that many people don't have. And I believe this is one of the rare occasions where we've actually talked to someone who was in the 5th Brigade and knew what was happening. I was doing my officer cadetship at the ZMA, Zimbabwe Military Academy. A part of uh, what I'd call, we used to have what they call EGT, GT course. From time to time, you'd go there for review for, for uh, among certain courses within the, 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 the force. So, while we were there, because uh, the course conductors were the British, the Zimbabwe National Army was trained by the British from 1980, the, the, the integration process as such. So, while we were there, there was actually, I think, a requirement from the Army headquarters that some certain people be sent to what? To 5th Brigade, for the formation of 5th Brigade when it was formed. So hence I was picked to be one of them who went to 5th Brigade, fewer of us. Of course on our side from the Zipla side or from this part of the country, we were very few that were posted there. So this is how I found myself in 5th Brigade. So the first day you get there, how is it like? The well, there? the atmosphere wasn't good, you know. Other units that they already been formed before were of uh, truly military. Militarily, you never talk about politics, you know. But uh, it was a different story. When we reached the Elephant Ruchi, slogans were being, it was this order of the day, Pamirina Zano PF, Pamirina Prime Minister, Pamir. That's when we met the Koreans there. Yeah. So uh, there was a lot of more animosity there. And part of us, they never stayed the days, they, they ran away, yeah, because it was like passing the machua chua pass and so on, yeah. So like these Koreans, were they able to speak English out of interest? No, they, <laughs> they, they were interpreters, they were interpreters, yes. Uh, few of them who could speak like, English, but most of them, they couldn't speak English. So you went through the training? We went through the training, went yeah. through training. Uh, basically, actually, the first six weeks, it was for officers to be trained uh, the Korean way. Uh, the doctrine, the uh, Kimili Sangism, uh, that's basically what we're taught, and also the firearms and so on, the other military related courses. Then, thereafter, then it was the officers together with one instructor in every company that were training uh, AMA soldiers who came. But most, most of them, they came from Tongogara Assembly Point, and there were a few battalions that were integrated and uh, with the majority who were ex -Zanda. you see. There was any time when Amazipra they decided to, what, to hold on going to integration, but then the Amazanla, they went ahead. So those are the units that were picked to go and form fire brigade, part of them, yeah. In addition to those that were from Dogokara Assembly Point. So like you would say, how many people were there? 3,000, 5,000? No, I would put it in the 5th Brigade because it had basically four infantry battalions. A battalion you are looking at about 1,300 men. So that you multiply that figure by four, and uh, there was also an artillery regiment. You see, so artillery regiment also you can basically say minus plus 1,000 people men, and uh, the administrative part in the brigade HQ. Uh, so you can maybe add another 150 people. So, so I think uh, about the. Uh, 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 three point something to four thousand to do. Yeah, four thousand to five thousand. Yes. So the the training was it mostly basically the like the ordinary training that happens in the army, or it was about loyalty, patriotism. Yes, there was the 
the Jewish idea, because every time before you conduct a lesson, you would quote Marshall Kim Lee Sang. Marshall Kim Lee Sang was the a president of, uh, or the leader of the Democratic Republic of Korea. They, are, they have got their doctrine that in the case then you are going for military drills. You would then say, no, uh, the great leader Marshall Kim Lee Sang said this to this effect about this drill. How a military person should behave like this, like this, like this, you see? Yeah, so we would quote such things. Then politics was there, the loyalty was there, besides the, the combat uh, also was there. So mm. when these guys eventually, the training is done and people mm. go out, you know, were you deployed on the ground? No, we, let me say, there was, when it was officially launched, I will take you a little bit back. Yeah. When this brigade was officially launched, the then prime minister was the, the also the defense minister, uh, Robert Mugabe, came in there. There was actually a ceremony to officially launch the 55 brigade. That's why he, when he narrated to say what is 50 brigade, he said in his own words, it all began as a theory between myself and the great leader of the Republic of Korea. Way back during one of my visits during the armed struggle days in 1978, that when I visited Korea, we discussed with Marshal Kim il -sang. and we decided that immediately after independence we'll form a brigade, a special brigade which is not only going to be loyal to the government but to the party. So theory has now come into practice. It is here you are. He then tried to translate also in what? In Shona, what it means, and so on, so on, so on. Then he then said his own way. Of course, I know. Within, there are few people here who are not supposed to be there. Of course, the reference was to us who came from here. So you have got to toe the line, or you are going to be descended by the National Antibiotic Armour, in his own words. <laughs> so that was the formation of Fire Brigade. <laughs> so you knew that you have to toe the line? I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But what did toe the line mean? Meaning that you have to follow party, the party way of thinking irrespective of that you are a military person. When you are a military person, you are not supposed to be indulged in politics as such. Yeah, well. So, but that was a special brigade. Yeah, because he, he actually said special brigade. Commander of special brigades was parent shit. Officers of special brigade and men of special brigade. Yes. So, during that time, did you ever think that, I mean, this brigade has been trained specifically to go and deal with the people in Matewele? Uh, I know there were others who had some careless talking who would actually uh, uh, divide the secrets. Uh, although it wasn't really said that way, but you could see the atmosphere and the language that was there. That was an indication to say, this is the brigade that will deal with such cases. And uh, because you see, he said it, it is to quell any rebellion that can be there in a country, to defend the party. So in a way, you would really understand what it means to when quelling and who were rebellions, who were likely to be rebellions even by then. It was obvious people from Matewele and were not loyal to Zanopia. Yeah. So the other interesting thing about the 50th Brigade is that it's trained mm. before there's uh, any serious <coughs> uh, cases of dissident. Mm. 1981, I think, September, mm. there is the Passau Parade. Mm. Then you, you start... The, the, the Passau Parade was in 1982. Yes. Mm. Uh, then you start having the issues of dissidents, 1983. Mm. So was this in preparation of what was going on? Like I said, what he said, it was a theory between himself way back in 1978. So it meant it was actually a preparation of that. Yeah. Yeah, they were following up. Whether dissidents were there or not no. there, but the idea of that was... <laughs> yes, mm. they, mm. So you, then people go to the ground now, they are deployed. Where do you go? Uh, actually, when they came into, after the pass out, training was there. I'm taking from September 1981 up to May, June 1982, when there was a, 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 a pass out. When the then Prime Minister was there, the Defence Minister, uh, the former President who was there, Kenan Banana, was also invited. Amazon Mnangaga was there. And when all arms were fired and so on, and everybody was excited, even the master of ceremony once said, which, ah, I feel like remaining here, staying with this. Yeah, it was, he was very happy to, be, to see all this fire, drill work, fireworks that was taking place. Because I, I mean, from the videos that I saw, the guys could do karate, they could uh, they were, the bricks. Yeah, there was a yes. company that was specifically trained for a karate. 
it wasn't everybody, but there was a company, a karate company that was trained by a Korean company, company. So they would use that company too. Mm. So now the guys are deployed in Matibula Land. Mm. Were you part of the people who went to the ground? Actually, what happened is that immediately after the training, after the pass out parade, when they started deployment here, some of us who were who had units there were withdrawn. RT, you, you returned back to their units. Actually, we were withdrawn from our units and went back to stay at the brigade headquarters, Guinea Fowl. Guinea Fowl. And some of us were even uh, relegated, reverted their ranks, see? And some of them were demoted from an officer status to a corporal or to a sergeant, just to frustrate. And some of us even left the army there. And let alone, I know of a few guys who were killed because of this thing that I can mention, that I don't even name that were killed. So why were they killed? I, that one to say, because they were loyal to, to Zapu, because they were Zebra, they are not loyal to, they have got the mentality of being dissidents. That was the, mm -hmm. the scene. So with the information that we have now and what we went through them, do you really believe that uh, the issue of dissidents was genuine? Well, uh, to my thinking, Like uh, ex combatants they were from the bush, and the people were doctrined under the politics of Zapu. From yeah, being young, and uh, the only thing that you knew is that uh, Zapu was going to rule. You are coming from the country, from, uh, from outside the country, from the liberation movement, with high hopes of saying maybe after the independence I'll be brought, I'll be somewhat. Then people, when people came here, there was Zanla from the other side. Zanla was the ruling part now. So everything was in favor of Zan. Singing radios, it was all Zan. Some guys within Zipra, of course, I would agree that they were frustrated. And that frustration led to some to say they were in the army, they were frustrated in the army. They were chased away from the army. See, some of them were demobilized with no what, and what would one think? An armed person is very dangerous, and the person had been given all that idea. So some of them, they opted to what? To go and maybe he, 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 he what? organized the armed struggle and say, maybe we can be able. But I can say there were very, very few, and, uh, and uh, even the leadership was not involved. It was through the frustration, you see, which never warranted all this brigade to be deployed. But do you think the guys were trained enough to actually deal with the dissidents? Uh, <laughs> you mean basically the training? The, the 5th Brigade was it trained specifically to deal with the dissidents. Uh, the doctrine, yes, but not from not in the ground. Mm. The doctrine, the hate, they were going there with emotions to say, yeah, these are the distant, these are the intervenors. So, 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 so. But uh, I don't that they were combat ready, really. I was there in the training, because compared with the training that I had before, you couldn't really say they would resist. For instance, with the unit that was at Kwai River Mine, that was trained there. Before it was disbanded, that was... It was more well trained. It couldn't. The fifth get couldn't stand that brigade. Mm. So now you are at the base, the the, the headquarters of the fifth brigade in mm. Guinea. They are deployed, and you hear all this story. Oh, did you hear of this story? <coughs> the information being related to the base on what is going on the ground. Yeah. Yes, it was there. It was there. Some of them were not even afraid to tell you that we were killing them. Yeah, and they were yeah, it was there, definitely. Mm. So you, you know your people are under siege, probably are not even able to go home at that particular time. Mm. How did you feel? Hey, that's one disturbing a moment that was there. Very, very, very dis uh, disturbing. Uh, I remember I had a friend who passed, uh, who was killed, he was told, babe. Uh, I heard that the last time he was taken to CIO and uh, his tongue was just protruding like this. Mm. Mm. So. Well, <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. So these guys know you are in love mm. and you are one of the, the dissidents, mm. so to speak, that you are looking for. Mm. Did you get the frictions with the guys that you were working with? Yeah, I remember in their first code on search that they conducted in Bulawayo. Uh, was it 19, uh, 1983? Yeah, yeah. The first code on search, uh, I was on leave. Yeah, they found me I, 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 in the house in Pumula East. And uh, my batman, 
was the one who was uh, with others conducting house to house search. He found me say, inside and said, Ah, Chef Omuri Panabo. I said, Ayaya. I said, I'm no girl. And he said, ah, Okay, we're just conducting the search. But he gave me that face of Utano. He still respects me. But uh, from there, he went out and told the other chef who was co commanding them that I saw in love with them. Later on, I saw a group of a section of people coming, says Chef Zanzitimu Shades and a chef in Pumula East Shopping Center. And there was Captain Mazoro, who I was with. I so, said, no, love, we need maybe some interviews a little bit with you. I said, but you guys, you know I'm on leave. And what is the problem? I said, I ah, know, uh, I want to find out whether, whether you may have any information about dissidents. Dissidents? <laughs> How? Ah, and then I was a little bit interviewed. I said, no, 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 I know nothing about dissidents. I'm staying in town. I'm not in contact. I'm just on leave. I'm with my family. Then from there, they were saying, no, but I think we need to, you need to be cleared by uh, the cent Central Intelligence Organization and the police. So they took me to Pumola, uh, Pumola Police Station, where is the, the main headquarters that involved the CIO, the army, the police, and so on. Where they, I was then interviewed by the CIO. But when they discovered that I had a leave pass and they had everything, they said, but do you know this guy? I said, ah, this is Mazuri, this is so and so. I work with them. Then they said, ah, but ah, anyway, we have nothing to, to, to investigate you. So I think you are free to go back. But uh, when I was just about to go, one CIO happened to be in Devil said to me, now look, look, don't go. Mm, there was this guy, they're saying they will take you back. Maybe you may disappear forever. Why not just opt to what? To get in, to sleep in the cell. Then tomorrow morning when it's close, then you will go. So this was at night? That was at night. Yeah. Uh, so I slept in the cell. Following day, then I went home. So chances were your own friends would leave you? Yes, Children. yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. It happened many times that uh, they would kill you. Mm. It happened. So when you went back to work, mm. and these are the guys who saw you Puma, did you ever have a conversation with Machita? <coughs> Unfortunately, when I went to work, I was in a posted somewhere where I wasn't with them. I never met them again at work. Mm. Mm. I was meeting them as we interacted with other military duties in other postings that you mm. So if you had to meet these guys now, what would you say to them? <laughs> uh, emotions are there. But then you ask yourself, what should I do there? Huh? Yeah, it's bad. It was bad. But... Uh, what can you do? You know, we, we have had people, in, I mean, in terms of, uh, when I, according to someone who was maybe working with these guys, mm. how bad do you think were the killings? They were so bad. They were really bad. Mm. They were really bad. Mm. I remember one guy who was involved in our operation, I always to work with him. He was Major Mshang. He said when they were at Lupane, there were two Ndebele guys within a company. A company is a formation that involves about 100 to 150 men. So he was the one who was commanding that unit. But when killing started, instructions were even given to the, somebody lower than you to give instructions. You would be his senior, but he would be having more powers to you and instructions direct from the, the top. So Mshanga said, no, at one time we decided to add to mobilize these two other Ndebele guys and to shoot all those people and you try and run away. But when they thought of a distance from Lupane St. Luke's suit, how then do you touch <laughs> the escape route? <laughs> Maybe they were going to hold you. Mm. So you have uh, guys who are Ndebele in the ground, they go, they operate and they actually find their people being killed. And yeah, they, they, were, they, were, they were very few that were there, that remained there. But some of them, they were just taken back or made to do some other light duties within the headquarters. Some of them, yeah. That is those that were like, likely to be there. But fear was being instilled to them. Mm -hmm. Very, very much fear. Mm. So do you think this was tribal? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I should believe so. Yes. Because if it wasn't tribal, the formation, these distances that were there, if ever they were there, those that were there, they were very few. And I remember during the time of uh, uh, what we call this uh, uh, amnesty, when they were given amnesty, I think there were less than 100 and something, 100 and something dissidents that came out. 
And you imagine a brigade, the whole brigade, the whole army was busy in the operations of those dissidents. How do you think something people never warranted all that kind of oh, <laughs> military deployment? But how many, I mean, <coughs> what was the success rate of the 5th Brigade in killing these deaths? <laughs> The 50 Brigade, I won't say it was, it, it came here really to, to combat dissident. It was, came, it came here really to, to terrorize the people of Matabele, to be honest. See, it was to terrorize, uh, to murder, let me say. Mm. Because how then do you say it's a brigade and be able to say it's a brigade, but you're killing honest people. People were not armed. Mm? If all those people were armed and fighting back, then you say, yes, this is a brigade. But uh, most people who were affected were civilians. People were not armed. Not killed. So, so lastly, I mean, to what do you think? I mean, would be the best way to to solve or I mean, or deal with this ground issue as a way of bringing closure to it. Mm. I think maybe a commission of inquiry uh, or a piece like the one that uh, was conducted in South Africa, uh, when 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 people were interviewed and uh, people were confessing and. Uh, and uh, I sh even those that are were affected, I believe they will be able to, 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 to forgive. I think uh, this program has answered so many questions that people have had. Questions like, was it tribal? Was this genocide? Was it made up of people who were mostly from Zanla and their enemy was Zapu? And it is also clear that it was a, there was a thin line between a dissident and Ndebele. This was the Breakfast Club, and we were talking to uh, Mr. Ndlovu, who was part of the 5th Brigade. My name is Zendere Ndebele. Till we meet again tomorrow, have a good day. Mm -hmm.